Hello, everybody. That is Josh. I'm Chuck. We do the Stuff You Should Know podcast, and this is our Internet Roundup. And it's a different week. That's right. <laughs> Chuck, welcome to the Internet. Thank you. Let's it's, jump in. It's nice in here. It does. It's a little gamey, though. Yeah, well, it's not our fault. No. <laughs> uh, so we found, well, you found a couple of pretty cool articles. Yeah. One on the Daily Mail to start off with. I love that site. Which, frankly, th- it is. It's a great site. They have lots of good pictures and stuff, and <laughs> they get to the bottom of things. They interview people. They use quotes sometimes. Yeah. But it's um like a newspaper. The one thing you have to watch with the Daily Mail is look for a date, because they will very frequently report stuff, like on you know when it happens, then three years later, then six years later, then 10 years later, right. like it just happened. Right. So you have to look for a date. Is this one one of those? I I couldn't I couldn't I didn't have that impression. Okay, because this I th- it seems new yeah. today, which would be, you know, a couple of months old. You know what? Comes out. Uh, it, there's a timestamp on this um, picture that's uh, from August 24th. So yes, this did just happen. All right. But that's just a pro tip for dealing with the Daily Mail. Like look for the date or look elsewhere, and it doesn't matter. It's still interesting stuff and exactly. very frequently factually based, but. Uh, this one is fresh off the presses. Yeah, because unless this has been debunked, it remains interesting forever. Yes. Uh, the title is Mystery Glow Over the Pacific Ocean. Pilots left baffled by strange orange and red lights spotted yeah. in the dead of night. There were a couple of dudes, Dutch pilots, flying um, along the... Uh, Near Kamchatka. Yeah, along Russia in the Pacific, right? Yeah, and uh, they were just flying over... Um, what is nothing but water, and as you'll see from this photo here, that, beautiful uh, with their copyright over it and everything. Yeah, <laughs> it is some weird, weird, glowing lights coming seemingly from under the water. Yeah, well, they were flying and they saw a vertical um, lightning bolt strike the ocean, uh, and the weird thing was is there wasn't any storm anywhere around. Yeah, and then about 20 minutes later, when they flew over that spot. They noticed that the sea was glowing so brightly, as you can see on this picture, uh-huh. um, that it was illuminating the clouds below the plane. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And their best guess is an underwater volcano. Yeah, which is a pretty good guess. Not bad, but... I was going to say like plankton or whatever until I saw the picture and I was like, that is not plankton. Yeah, and there have also been theories of uh, apparently squid fishing boats can cause a, a glow somehow. And... Um, this guy was like, there's no yeah, squid that fishing out. out where we were. Um, so who knows what it is? Well, the weird thing is, is he was he automatically thought, well, yeah, it's it's this has got to be an underwater volcano going off. Um, but he didn't fly through a smoke plume like he assumed he would. Yeah, true. So the the lightning has got to be some sort of clue. Yeah. Um, the fact that there was no smoke plume may or may not. Who knows? Maybe the thing hadn't boiled up through the ocean yet. I don't know. I'm I'm with him. I think it was a volcano. The volcano. But what an amazing thing to witness. Yeah, and they I mean they got some great photos of it too. Uh that belong to him. Yeah, they do belong to him. <laughs> JPC Van Heist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that second one here, let's put that one up. That is um from a greater distance. Yeah. And it looks like, oh, these that's just a city in the distance. But it's the ocean. It's the ocean. All righty. Moving on. Love that one. Uh, from NPR, Colorado's pot brownies now come with instructions from Luke Runyon. Um, well, Luke Runyon isn't issuing instructions. He wrote the no. article. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so Colorado, as everyone knows, uh, for about a year or more now, has uh, legalized recreational marijuana use. And uh, with that has come edibles when you bake uh, marijuana into brownies or candies or cookies or whatever. Or they even have sprays, too. Oh, they've got all sorts of drops and tinctures and... I, any way they can get it in your body, someone has thought of. Right, and so a lot of people are like, well, um, there's pot in this brownie. I'll eat a pot brownie, maybe two, because I really like brownies. Yeah, and, uh, or as I they, really like pot. Right, yeah. or you like both, and right. you're like, I'll just eat as many as I can. And as they put in this um, in this article, a lot of them end up sweating and paranoid in the ER. <laughs> yeah, and um, there was one, uh, I can't remember her name now, I meant to look it up. There was one lady, I think, from the New Yorker or the New York Times that had never had it and wanted oh, to man. try it out yeah. and just totally freaked out and really um, from the marijuana advocate side gave it a bad name because they were like, this lady didn't know what she was doing. Right. She should have not had nearly that much. 
And so what they're doing now in Colorado, as of August 1st, um, dropped what they call emergency rules, which are warning labels. However, the dispensaries are saying, you know what, warning labels, uh, this isn't the crowd for warning labels. <laughs> <laughs> so I think our best bet is, as, um, is to guide them ourselves when we sell it to them and like speak to them. They call them bud tenders instead of bartenders, which is, yeah, makes me want to punch my computer. And they said they think their best bet is to talk people through it when they buy it and say, here's the recommended dosage. Mm -hmm. uh, our advice is always go start slow, go low. Yeah. Or go low, start slow, go low. Sure, and they mean low milligram dosages. Start low, go slow. Right, and they say wait <laughs> wait two hours because it yeah. takes a while to kick in. Start with 10 milligram dosage. That's what they, they recommend. Um, and uh, use only graphics brand bongs. <laughs> Is that the third piece of advice? I think so. <laughs> and But the handouts are printed by graphics. Oh, okay. So there may be some sort of conflict of interest there. I gotcha. Well, what they're trying to do is is figure out how to make a previously illegal substance legal, and it's tricky, you know? You can't do that overnight. Right. So they're still learning. Um, and they say it's in their best interest to do this because they want people to have a good experience. So they'll come back and buy more brownies. Right, because you got to keep the bud tenders employed. Got to keep those bud tenders working. Uh, but no less than uh, the Brookings Institution have uh, heaped praise upon how they've handled everything so far in this transition. So I think they're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, if you're interested by that kind of thing, there's a really good New Yorker, um, not New York Times, and that was Maureen Dowd, the New York Times columnist right. who did that, who got in over her head. <laughs> yeah. She played with fire and got burned. She did. Um, the New Yorker had a, an article in 2013 called Buzzkill, and it's about Washington State, which is doing the same thing as Colorado, Yeah, how they've hired this guy to basically figure out how to implement how to take pot out of the black market and put it into yeah. the regular market without doing all sorts of these crazy repercussions. Really interesting article. Yeah, and um, I, d I did click to another uh, link that interviewed um, an emergency room doctor about the cases that he's seen, and he said it's really, honestly, about the easiest thing you're going to come across in an ER. He said we sedate them <laughs> and we put them in a quiet room and everything's fine in a few hours. Well, yeah, well, yeah. So supposedly I saw an article on Alternet um, that smelling or tasting... Uh, black pepper actually has a calming effect Interesting. that counteracts pot paranoia. So they just whoo, blow it in your face. Right, exactly. Put you that, in a quiet that room. That doesn't freak anybody out <laughs> when they're paranoid. If somebody comes up and just blows something in your face. Right, that burns and you sneeze. Dressed as the graphics bong jester. <laughs> um, all right, so that's they're, they're making their way. Start low, go slow. I want to get that right. And, of course, keep it out of the hands of children because yeah. when you dress thing, something up like gummy bears you gotta put big time warning labels on there <laughs> like keep it in this package don't put it in the jar on your kitchen counter right that kind of thing maybe lock it up in a safe yeah or just buy only what you're gonna eat right then like a hunter gatherer exactly well that's it that's the only that's the last interesting thing on the internet right now for us to discuss that's so right. we'll join you guys again next week when we have plenty more cool stuff in the meantime, leave a comment if you want. If you have something to say, you can subscribe to. Join us on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and hang out with us at our home on the web, stuffyoushouldknow.com. We'll see you next week. <laughs>